All right. Tonight is our communion and healing rally. We'll be receiving the Lord's table. Uh, but, you know, when we teach on healing, or teach, when we're teaching in lines to, 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 to minister to people, uh, you know, we're not always, not always necessarily going to teach healing, but we could teach subjects that are going to be an aid to healing, like faith. Yeah. You know, um, if we're going to receive by faith, you could teach faith and then make it applicable to receiving your healing. And so that's what we're doing tonight. We're just going to talk about, uh, not very, very long, but um, faith sees the answer. Everybody says, faith sees the answer. Okay, what's the FBC mission? Huh? We are here, so people get it. So, say the FBC mission is? All right, there's some, there's some hang tags out there in the foyer. If you didn't get one, grab some. Hallie, we still pick up a little bass. Did you hear that? I, I walk into this area, I, I hit a little bassy boom. Um, hallelujah. Uh, I think I'll call Tim back. Maybe him, me and him will just stand here and work on that because I don't need anything else. <laughs> Get rid of that. Return to, return to Romans chapter 4. Glory to God. Glad you guys came back out tonight. We're not going to keep you extremely long. Um, but I've been trying to have that, you know, I want to have that opportunity to do like Paul did. And when that guy falls out the window and he has to go raise it from the dead, we get to have one of those miracles. Does anybody want to sit in the window tonight? No, nah, no, nah, okay. All right, don't want to be the guinea pig. Okay, Cap will do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul writes here in Romans uh, 4, 17, As it is written, I have made thee the father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. So faith sees an answer. Now, the Weymouth translation has a really nice translation, for the, particularly for the latter part of this verse. It says here where he says, and calls those things which be not as though they were. Weymouth says, and makes reference to things that do not exist as though they did. God makes reference to things that do not exist as though they did. I, I, that's, that's always been one of the... Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, tr the rapture. <laughs> Did we find that? <laughs> Glory. And so Paul, uh, Paul writes here and says that Abraham, or God, I'm sorry, God makes reference to things that do not exist as though they did. And when we're, li when we're living by faith, you've got to see the answer with the eye of faith, even though you don't have it manifest in front of you. you, you we're to be like God. We're to be imitators of God. We're to be copiers of God. We're to do like God. And God, his faith works on the vein of making reference to things that don't exist as though they do. We're to do the same thing. And so in the arena of receiving by faith, we're going to have to call things that be not as though they were or make reference to things that do not exist as if they did. All right? Now, when it comes to the subject of healing, you know, we've we got we to call things that aren't as though they were. I believe that I receive my healing according to the word of God. I declare myself the healed of the Lord. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. He, he took it to the cross. He, he bore my sicknesses by his stripes, and that was taken away from me at the same time he took my sin. And so therefore, according to the word of God, 1 Peter 2, 24, by his stripes I was healed. If I was healed, then I is healed. And that's bad English, but it's still, you know, we got to get make sure we get into the present tense. See, Isaiah prophesied and said, by his stripes we are healed. Peter confirms the prophecy fulfilled by saying, by his stripes we were healed. But the church in the present day must say, by his stripes I am healed. Right now, right now. I am present tense healed by Jesus' stripes. Amen. And so we have to make reference. You know, the Bible, this, is, this is where God took Abraham. Remember, Abram's name was changed from Abram to Abraham. And Abraham meant father of many nations. And he didn't get that name change until 99. How'd you like to be fatherless at 99 and get the new name, you're the father of many nations? <laughs> Hello. And of course, Sarah at 90 got a name change. That's really the one that was uptight. Hello. At 90, she's going to get pregnant. Now, Guinness Book of World Records has somebody at 60 some years old and it's about artificial insemination or, you know, you know um, no, 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 no. Guinness has got it wrong. Sarah was the oldest to have a baby. Hello. And um, 
she was changed the mother of a multitude or mother of many nations. Faith has to speak what doesn't exist. In other words, it has to speak what God's word says about it. Though it may not be manifest or exist in the natural, it has to be brought there by speaking it. Remember, the Bible says, God said, light be, light was. And the King James says, let there be light. Hebrew literally says, God said, light be, light was. Amen. Now, scientists get it right every once in a while. And see, they, they said the, the universe is expanding in every direction at the speed of light from a single point. Yeah! Right where God said, light be. And you know what? You know why it's still expanding in every direction at the speed of light? He never told it to stop. He just said, light be. It's still obeying the command of God. The universe is expanding in every direction at the speed of light because God told light to be. And he never told it to stop. That word is still being carried out. Think about, the, for, for all that we know, and everything about the humanity, and about the plan of God, and about creation, all started with the first two words of light be. And that word is still in force to this day. The universe is still obeying God. It hasn't stopped obeying God. It's still doing what he told it to do. And if that word is that powerful, which has nothing to do with our covenant, has nothing to do with our relation with God, it's just the word God spoke. Think of the words God has spoken to us in covenant relationship. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Meaning what? Meaning we can take up his word, put it into our mouth by faith and speak it, and it must do what we tell it to do. In other words, it must obey what was spoken. <coughs> by his stripes we were healed. That word is still in force today. You know, the Old Testament said, he said he sent his word and healed them. Wow. Wow. He sent his word and healed. Look at over at Isaiah 55. I may keep you longer than I thought. You just never know with me. I wish I had a whistle. I do, it's just not on me. Verse 8 of Isaiah 55. For my thoughts... Or higher, I mean, are not your thoughts, neither are your ways, my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, <coughs> so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, just on a side note, you know at 71 today we're supposed to have some snow tomorrow night? And go down to 19 degrees? Just thought I would throw that out at you. Aren't y'all glad I told y'all that? How many are excited that I told you it's going to go from 71 to 19? <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Let me back up. For as the, rain, the heavens are higher than the earth, and so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down the snow from heaven, and returneth, turneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it to bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish the thing which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Now, we have, you've got to use some, you know, some uh, biblical analytic, uh, analysis here. If he sent words out about healing, what were they sent to do? Heal. If he sent prosperity words out, what they were sent to do? Prosper. If he sent salvation words out, what were they sent to do? Save. Amen? And so when we look at healing words or healing scriptures, they are words that have gone forth out of his mouth. He said it won't return to me void. Actually, he said it will prosper in the thing I sent it to do. Amen? 
And that word void is the same one used over there in Genesis where it says, and the earth was void and without form. Okay? It's also the place where God, you know, God's, um, uh, I forget, it's Ezekiel or wherever it says, where, Jeremiah, 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 Jeremiah says, I make nothing void. Yeah. Same, tohu, T-O-H-U, the, the English transliteration of the Hebrew word. Tohu, make nothing void and without form. Okay? And he says his word won't return to him void. Now, uh, how many of you ever had something happen that, that was void? You know, you invested something in something, you did something, you put your money in the little machine, you put your money in the Coke machine, and they just don't give you your Coke. Your money went and was void. It didn't give you your return. You didn't get your Coke coming back at you. You didn't hear it go, sh -sh -sh boom. I love to get the old, if you can find it, they're hard to find. Open the little door and reach it and pull the glass bottle one out of that, that steel rack, you know, and they're icy cold. Hallelujah. Pop the top. All right. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Glory. Let's just go get us a drink. I mean, a cold, ice cold. Anyway, stop. Pepsi, Mountain Dew, Dr. Pepper, whatever you can find in a glass bottle. But when you put, if you put your money in a, in a machine and you don't get anything back, that money went out void and went out and did not accomplish what it was sent to do. It was sent to get you a drink. Amen? You pop, or now, now you can swipe your credit card in, in, you know, on some machines, you know, and, and, and it'll charge your credit card for $1.50 Coke. Anybody use those? Well, if you don't get, your, if you don't get what you, put, you, you sent it to get, it returned to you void. But God said, my word does not return to me void. It will accomplish the thing I sent it to do. And so when you send God, well, how do, do we send God's word out? By speaking it. We have to take the word and put it in our mouth. Um, the word um, covenant in the New Testament, one of the definitions, not the only, but you know, one of the definitions is to say the same thing as. See, when we come into co agreement with God, when we come into covenant with God, we're to say the same thing he says. <clears throat> we're to speak over the circumstances of life what he would say over the circumstances of life. Because faith sees the answer. We get, we get what God says about it from his word. Then we take his word and we return it to him with our confession. And he said it won't come back void. It will accomplish the thing he sent it to do. And so when you go to 1 Peter 2.24, you're laying hold of a word from God that was sent with the promise and the affirmation from God himself that it will accomplish what I sent it to do. It's full of the power of God to accomplish what it was sent to do. Now, we know from Peter that we were born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed, the, the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Amen. And we know about seeds. What do y'all know about seeds? Every seed produces how? After its own kind. You don't plant tomatoes and get collards. It just don't happen. You can put you a bunch of collard seeds in the ground and don't go out there looking for strawberries. Well, I'm waiting for a strawberry. Why? You plant a collard. I don't care. I just believe and I'm going to get me a strawberry harvest out of my collard seeds. It doesn't work that way. There is the law of seed time and harvest. There's a law at work. And the law started with God. And God said, that if you go look at Genesis, it is the law of seed time and harvest established in the very first, chap first chapters of what we have in our Bible. Every seed produces after its own kind. So I like, I like what they call down in eastern Carolina, <clears throat> which is where we're from, a cabbage collard. They cross cabbage and collards. They, they grow like collards, but they, they're sweeter. They, got, they were mixed with cabbage, and so they're not, they're not as bitter as your standard collard. Now, we, we got seeds, and they're little bitty seeds. We got about 10,000 seeds. They're so small, it's hard to count. I mean, we got quart bags of them, a couple of quart bags of them. There are just thousands of seeds in there. And then a couple of years ago, we let them seed up. We got thousands more. 
Just about eight plants seeded out, and we put them in a black garbage bag, turned them upside down when they dried out. We poked a hole in the bottom, and I'm telling you, thousands of seeds poured out. So we got, we're, we're, we're good for, we're, we're good till Jesus gets back. I'm just telling you. <laughs> we got some collard seeds. <coughs> now, I've planted them and never got anything different. And really glad I didn't get anything different because I wanted the collards. Amen. But God set a law in motion that everything produces after its own kind. Now, it's hard for you to take seeds about praying for your leaders and believe for healing. No, those are, those are, those are uh, leader prayer, leader seeds. Praying for your leader seeds. If you want healing, you've got to plant healing seeds. We, we speak it with the word of God. We speak the word of God. My, our tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Amen. Where's it writing? On the tables of your heart. Amen. You're God's husband. You're God's field. You're God's tillage. You're God's garden. And when we speak words of faith, we're speaking seeds of faith that will produce after their own kind. Amen. So what do we do? We have to take up the word of God and say what the word says about it. So we're planting that seed that God says will not return to him void. That word will bring forth and accomplish what he sent it to do. And when you plant that seed, that seed will grow. And that seed will mature. And that seed will produce. But do not think you're going to plant prosperity seeds and get healed. They're not designed to heal you. They're designed to make you money. Don't think you're going to plant healing seeds and get prospered. They're not designed to make money. They're designed to heal your body. Those scriptures were sent to, a, that, those words of God were sent to accomplish something. And he said they will prosper with he, in what he sent it to do. Can somebody say glory? What well, if I need healing and prosperity? Get both kinds of seed and plant them. Speak them. I was listening to somebody, they were asking me about, they were asking about Brother Charles Capps, and um, apparently he told his wife, like on Friday, he was going home Sunday, and went home Sunday. Said, I'm going home Sunday, and left. At least he warned her. <laughs> I'm going home Sunday. Sunday got here, he went home. Amen. Wigglesworth did that, I'm going home today. He went home. Told the family, I'm going home today. They thought he was getting a little senile, they had no idea. He was going to heaven. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? And so we, ha we have to understand that God said his word will ac accomplish the thing he sent it to do. God's word is life. God's word is his seed that he speaks. And we take it and we use our mouth and we plant that seed. It produces the harvest of what we send it, what we speak. It is designed to do that. Just as natural seed. And the funny thing about seed, you know, they took some seed out of the Pharaoh's tombs. There was plants that were extinct. And they planted some of them, and they grew. Now, this is seed rots. You're going to get wet and rots. As long as you keep it dry, once they're, once they're, they're, they're dried out and cured, um, you, can, you, you can store them indefinitely. And when you plant them and put them into the ground, and their water and germinate, they'll produce. It doesn't matter how long that seed's been sitting dormant. And actually, all seed is dormant seed until you plant it. What did Paul say? He said, uh, I planted, Apollos watered, or, and, and God giveth the increase. So neither is he that plants anything, he that waters anything, but it's God that gives the increase. And so, you know, uh, God's word's sitting there, and you've got, you got people got Bibles sitting in their rooms, and there's dormant seeds sitting in there. And it's not going to produce until it's placed, it planted, amen, and watered so that God can give increase to it. Whole book of dormant seed. Well, how many of you have ever gone to the, the, the seed store? They got little envelopes. You know, they got this kind of seed. They got green beans, and they got string beans, and they got corn, and they got sweet corn, and they got silver queen corn, and they got, you know, garden peas, and they got black-eyed peas. <laughs> They've got... Field peas. I detest black-eyed peas. Tastes like you're eating dirt. That's my opinion. 
I don't care if you do cook them with hogs out. They still taste like dirt. My grandma used to cook them with hog tongue on New Year's Day. Going to bring you good luck. Uh, well, I don't need any luck. Thank you. Look over there and see hog tongue and black eyed teas. I just didn't need it. And some pickled pig's feet. And they got really bad. They went and cooked some chitlins. Lord have mercy. Pack up and move somewhere else for the day. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. But see, all kinds of seed. See, your Bible's full of all kinds of seed. There's all types of seed in here. There's prosperity seed. There's healing seed. There's salvation seed. There's deliverance seed. There's stability seed. There's peace seed. There's joy seed. Amen. Amen. There's shouting seed. It's all in here. And if you'll take it and put it in your mouth and plant it, Amen. And water it with more scripture, more seed. More, more seed. Then, the, then, then you, you, you can do with the water, the water of the word. Then because the water of the word. It's amazing. God's got the whole thing. His word just does everything. Amen. And then God will give increase to it. So you can get peace by speaking what the word says. You can get joy by speaking what the word says. You can get, have a Holy Ghost shout coming on by speaking what the word says. You can get healed. You can get prospered. You can get delivered. You can have favor. You can have protection. You can be uh, delivered from your enemies by the seed that's in this book. This is, a, this is a Holy Ghost seed store. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. And God's already said that seed's going to produce after its own kind. Y'all hear you going home. How many think you want to go home? Don't, go, no, don't raise your hand. I'm going to have Joe lock the door and we're going to torture you. How would you torture somebody? Sing for a couple of hours. Well, I bet I could get KGB spies to give up anything. They won't just be singing to them for a couple hours. Look over Mark 11. Or I could whisper and talk like Jack Bauer. May 5th. Monday night, May 5th. Jack is back with a two-hour premiere. The whispering federal agent. Mark 11, verse 12. On the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of the figs was not yet. And Jesus answered, now see, he answered that tree. That tree said, I got figs. Jesus got there, didn't have figs, so he answered the lie. No man eat fruit of thee for, uh, from thee hereafter forever. And the disciples heard it. That did away with that silent thinking stuff, didn't it? They what? Heard it. Why? He had to speak to the circumstance to get a response. How many ever saw the old movie, uh, old television series uh, that NBC did back in the 70s called Jesus of Nazareth? You know, and every time Jesus was going to pray for somebody, they just used shadow of his hand going to somebody's head, had this real, you know, uh, High church, you know, choir. <laughs> Made it real spooky. I mean, it was really spooky, weird. Jesus wasn't weird. Jesus didn't act weird. Didn't have a choir walk around behind him singing when he did stuff. Okay? <clears throat> he goes to the tree, there's no figs there. He said, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever and walked off. But they heard it. Amen? Hallelujah. Now let's jump down, jump down a few verses. And um, on verse 20, and in the morning as they passed by, they saw, they're on the way back into the city. Um, they went out that night. In verse, verse 19 says, when the evening was come, they went out of the city. Verse 20, and in the morning as they passed by, he saw the fig tree dried up from the roots, or they saw. And Peter, calling to remembrance, now actually that phrase in the morning, men after, can, can literally mean in the Greek a period of time. It could have been a couple of months or weeks or whatever. And they just happened to be passing by again. And Peter looks over there and that tree's dried up. And he calls to remember, saying, Master, the fig tree that you cursed is withered away. And Jesus goes, time for a faith lesson. Here's an object lesson. Time for an object lesson. He says, have faith in God. Now my margin says, or have the faith of God. Now we talked about the other week about having faith in God 
And there's, there's having the faith, faith in God. There's having the faith of God. <clears throat> that you're going to have to have faith in God before you can exercise the faith of God. Okay? You're going to have to trust and rely on God before you can exercise and get things by speaking with the faith of God. So the faith of God starts with having faith in God. Okay? The faith of God, having the faith of God, allows you to, ask, uh, to appropriate and receive things that his word promises. Having faith in God is, is, is in your relationship with him, that you trust him, you rely on him, you know that he speaks the truth, he doesn't lie to you, he's going to do what he said he would do. Okay? And so the faith, of, the faith of God in your life is birthed out of having faith in God. Hallelujah. And he says, so has faith of God, or faith, you know, the, my, as my margin says, the faith of God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever, now anybody here a whosoever? Most of you. All right. If you're breathing, you're a whosoever. Okay? Uh, and of course in this context we're talking about believers. Shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that the things which he saith shall come to pass, he'll have whatsoever he saith. Can everybody say Amen. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. Have what? What things soever you desire that you believe that you received when you prayed. See? You, when, did you, when did you believe you had them? Come on now. Did you believe that you had it when it showed up? According to the Word of God, you don't. The Word of God says that you, that you what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them. And ye shall have them. The shall have them comes after believing you've already got them before you get them. Now, that's not weird. That is faith. Faith makes reference to things that do not exist as though they did. Now, somebody can go home tonight. You can get on your computer. You can go to Amazon.com, and you can buy something. And when you get done buying it, you can get up on, I just bought me, uh, you know, a MacBook Pro. 16 gig, tetrabyte hard drive, load it to the gills. Amen. Let me see it. I don't have it. I thought you said you just bought it. I did. Well, where is it? It's on the way. How do you know it's on the way? Because I believe that the company that I bought it from it will fulfill my order because I paid for it. I ordered it and I paid for it. Therefore, it's on the way. That's faith. See, when we speak God's word and believe that we receive, somebody says, let me see it. It's on the way. I said, it's on the way. The delivery date, you know, how many of you ever tried to track a package? Now, here, here you go. UPS, they're really, really good. FedEx, those guys are really good when you're tracking your packages. USPS, stink. I mean, they update, you know, um, it's on your front porch or in your mailbox, and then you get a notification. Your package has been shipped. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, three days later, your package was, it has been delivered. Yeah, I know. All right? Uh, we, won't, we, won't, we won't cut down the U.S. Postal Service too much. Private enterprise usually does better than the governmental stuff. Amen. Uh, military usually, military is the best thing they can do is, you know, have a centralized military. But other than that, they just need to stay out of the private sector. They just don't do it good. <laughs> Amen. So anyway, but, you know, you, you order stuff from FedEx. I mean, it's coming FedEx. But well, you can go on there and say, you uh, picked up, delivered to the carrier facility. You know, uh, it just got checked in in Memphis at the airport. It's been, it's been set on another plane. It's out for the truck for delivery. And I mean, two minutes after it hits your porch, you get an email. Just been delivered. You know, you're tracking your package. See, we track our package with the eye of faith. Amen? How do we do? We dial up some praise. That all, I would think through, supplication, through, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your, let your request be made known unto God. We track it with praise. Thank you, Father, it's on the way. Thank you, Father, I have my healing. Thank you, Father, it's mine. Glory to God. I received it on, on such and such date because I spoke what the Word says, and your Word says, if I believe that I receive when I pray, I shall have it. Therefore, I believe it's mine. Now, you don't have it in your hands yet. Amen. How many of you have ever ordered a car before? Anybody ever ordered a car? Nobody here has ever ordered a car? One time. An idea. I was, we were in Greenville, 
And uh, that's where I grew up, down, down in Greenville, North Carolina. And I had a little Fiat 124 Sports Spider, uh, British racing green, tan interior, uh, convertible. Okay? Love my little five-speed Fiat Spider. Uh, you know, I think a 1,800cc engine. Uh, and, um, and then about 1979, I got in a job as a computer programmer. I wanted a brand new one. So I went down to the dealership, and I ordered a brand new one. I'm going to trade my other one in. Hello. We signed all the paperwork, got all the stuff at the bank straightened out, and they, they said that, uh, you know, and, and well, there's one in Wilmington. I had just bought a car, and I didn't have possession of it. But two days later, I had it. But I was going to, I just bought a brand new Fiat Spider. I just brought me, a, and it was a Spider 2000. It was the newer, it went from the 124 to the 2000, Spider 2000. Um, and then when Fiat pulled out of North America, they became the Pina Ferreira two, uh, Spiders. Same body, same everything. Pina Ferreira just took, took over and, 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 and brought it into America. And because Fiat had, had lost all their whatevers. I forgot what it was. But that Spider 2000, I had it, but I wasn't driving it because it won't here. It had to be delivered, but it was mine. Are you here? Signed all the paperwork. It was mine. They were just getting it here. I ordered it. Brand new. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I was so excited. But it was mine. And see, we can, get, we can do that in the natural. We can get faith in the delivery companies. We can get faith in dealerships. We get faith. We have faith in Amazon. Come on. And those are all the natural things. And why? Because our experience teaches us that when you order that thing on that computer and you start telling, I just bought, a, I just bought you know, this or that, you're calling something that be not, though it is. Because it's not in your hand. It doesn't belong. You, you don't have possession of it. But you're telling everybody, I've got, a, I've got me a MacBook Pro or I got this or I got that. Because you ordered it. You paid for it. It's yours. Well, here's the thing. God's Word is what we use through, the, through faith to appropriate what's already been paid for. Your healing was paid for by Jesus Christ. And we order it. Now, listen, don't, don't, don't get uptight over the terminology. I'm using it as an allegory. You're not making God do something. But you're placing your order, as it were, through words of faith. Because faith says... I believe that I receive it. I have it now. It's mine. Even though God said that when you do that, you shall have it. Which means what? The shall having comes after the believing you receive. Amen. You will not have until you believe you receive. That's how it works. That's how faith works. We know God does it that way. God stood in the midst of nothing and said, Light be! Light was. It did not be, it, no, let me say this. It did not become was until he said be. God, oper, God makes reference to things that do not exist as though they did. It did not happen until he spoke it. In faith for light to be. And light became in response to God making reference to a thing that didn't exist as though it did. Can somebody say amen? amen. 